is doing well today. Um, so this time we're going to get into uh, something pretty interesting, a pretty cool project idea I had. We're going to make a uh, bot to create YouTube shorts for us. Um, and so this took me quite a while to do, actually. So it's probably going to be split up into two videos. But I got this idea, just a little background. Um, I was reading an article about how a lot of the stuff we see on um, YouTube shorts when you're scrolling through um, is actually just algorithmically generated and put together and then uploaded um, all from typically a Python bot. Um, and I was trying to look and see if there's any open source code out there for this kind of thing. And I couldn't really find anything uh, super good that was uh, like really fully complete. Most of the stuff that was completed was trying to be sold for like anywhere between 20 and $50, which um, I thought was kind of dumb because I felt like I could figure this out if I just worked at it a little bit. So today we're going to go through this Python code here. This YouTube short creation .py is actually going to go to the web, get the information we want, take some screenshots, and create a video with that. Um, and then in the next time, we'll get into these uh, this Google API and our uh, client secrets file, which is where we pull our authentication stuff from, um, and kind of finish up how we're going to take this and then upload it to YouTube. Uh, quick disclaimer just up front, this is not fully, fully com complete the way I would want it to be because um, every time you do run it currently, you have to... Uh, authenticate through the Google API like manually, which is a bit of a pain, but it's because it's in the um, development phase that I made my project under on Google's API. So until I fully complete it and publish it, it's going to have to get reviewed and stuff like that. Uh, it's not going to be able to completely automatically do this, but we can check out this code today, which is pretty cool. Creates a video completely from uh, nothing essentially. So starting out, we're going to use a lot of the stuff that we use. If you want to tutorial on kind of web scraping and getting images, go check out the Instagram bot video. I'll put that on the screen. Um, that I'm not going to get too in the weeds with how we're pulling the images and stuff just because uh, we've done that before and I really want to focus on the new stuff in this one, which particularly we need to import this CV2, um, which is going to allow us to make video. And then this MoviePie editor is going to help us with the uh, putting the audio overlay on. And lastly, this GTTS stands for Google Text-to-Speech, and that is what it's allowing us to put some audio over top of our file. We're, we're giving it some stuff to read, reads it, and then we put that audio over the file. Um, but yeah, with all that said, let's get into it a little bit. Oh, also, sorry, one more thing. This import here is new from what we've previously done. Um, so Selenium is, I'll scroll down here and just show you real quick right off the bat. I put both of them side to side so we can compare. Uh, Selenium's moving over to this new uh, syntax for pulling an element by XPath uh, and by anything. So instead of this whole find elements by XPath, you have find elements and then you put in by dot XPath dot class name, whatever. Um, so just a quick comparison so everyone knows how to do that. You have to use this by thing here, but you also have to make sure instead of just importing WebDriver, you have to import this uh, by as well. Okay, so let's get started now. Um, this is just us figuring out which directory we're in going into the correct directory. This is all of our image pooling stuff. Um, so what we're doing, I'll go ahead over here. We're going to this page, finding the top mover, which currently, this probably hasn't been refreshed, but it could still be correct, Snap Inc. Um, and it's going to pull that. And then we're going to navigate to, so saving into this top mover. That'll be important later when we do our Google text-to-speech. Uh, and then it's navigating to this page, which is the page with the actual charts and stuff of the top mover. So let's go navigate here, right? Um, then what we're going to do is similar to the Instagram bot, scroll down, get our screenshot. We'll then navigate over here, scroll down, get a screenshot of this. Um, and then from there, we put those images together and um, make our video. So this is all us getting the images. Quick notes here. Um, this stuff we've all seen before. We are saving off the technical indicators. So what that is, is uh, this neutral right here, and we're saving off the moving averages, which is strong cell right there. Okay. So if we we're saving those off, because we're going to use them in the Google text to speech thing later. Uh, then once we have our screenshots and these couple variables we saved, we're going to close the driver. So now this is, this is really awesome. Google text to speech is a super powerful tool, um, especially for a project like this. So all you have to do is we set this text, and as you can see, we're plugging in the top mover that we saved up top, the uh, technical indicator for what the oscillators are showing, and moving average indication. 
and then we're setting our language to English. And then you just have to call this GTTS text language slow, false, or true. I'm doing false because it just uh, works out better with the timing. Everything kind of flows a little bit better uh, and lines up with the video. Um, so here we're doing some image manipulation. This is kind of unnecessary because as we did with the Instagram bot, we're setting our window size to 1080 by 1080. So all these images are the same size. However, if they weren't, um, this code here in the middle would help us to resize those images um, to make them all the same. One thing that is important to note, same with the Instagram bot, uh, instead of the RGBA that comes with a PNG, uh, we have to convert to just RGB because that's going to provide or propose issues once we start trying to make it into a video using that uh, CV2 that we had up top. Uh, so we're doing this, resizing the images as I spoke about earlier, and then it just lets us know right here that it's resized. So now moving down to actually generating the video, this part's pretty cool, um, also pretty simple comparatively to stuff we've done before. Um, so we're just going through and getting all the images that are, you know, images, like all the files that are images inside of our folder, because there's going to be other files in here, other code files, the audio file later, these uh, Google API and the client secrets are also in there. And it's going to print, tell us what image it's going to make into a video. Now using the CV2 here, we are uh, just putting these images into here and we're saying, okay, these are the images we're going to use. Uh, then down here is where we're actually setting up the video writer. So this fork here, this thing, um, this is telling it what you want to save it as, MP4, uh, AVI, stuff like that. There's The syntax is a little weird for what goes inside here. I would have thought it would just be something like, you know, MP, like that, instead of uh, all these random quotations and stuff. But you can look up very easily if you look up CV2 fork codes. Um, you'll find all those that you need, that you need to use. Um, and then here, we're setting our video name, um, which we saved up up here, generate video MP4. This fork code is that. One is our frame rate. So for us, it doesn't really matter because we're using still images, but you can set the frame rate to whatever. Um, and then the width and height, which we already know are 1080 by 1080. So moving down a little bit more, here's where we're actually video.write. So this is where we're actually adding these images to our video. And you can see I'm using this for for image and images, so it's going to go through all the images, and then we're doing this uh, for I in range zero to four. So this might be a little confusing, but we have one frame per second. This is writing a frame, um, and when we do this zero to four, it's going to write four. It's going to put that image in four times. It's going to be four seconds of one image, and then four seconds of the next image, giving us an eight second video total. Um, just because if we if we didn't have this, it would be a two second video, and that's not quite what we're looking for because that would not be nearly enough time for our uh, generated audio that we did. Uh, right up here, that would not be enough time for that to all play, and it would just not it would just not work out. So that's what this uh, zero to four is doing there. It's giving us four seconds of each image. Then we're done with CV2, so we're gonna get rid of all windows and release the generated video. So calling that whole function right here, um, and now we need to we have a video with no audio, and we have the audio. So we need to put those together, um, which we are doing here with uh, Movie Pie. We're setting this the clip, which is our video file clip of this. Um, this is redundant, but it's just from testing earlier. Uh, and then audio file clip of our audio to MP3, which is that Google text speech that we did. So uh, we have to do this video clip, and we're doing this set audio function with the audio clip that we saved off here. And then uh, I was missing this first couple times and I was running through, I couldn't figure out what was wrong, had to do a little bit more research into how this works. You have to use this write video file um, on your, your clip here. Um, so it's gonna, this is gonna write the output of this whole thing back into this MP4, uh, overwriting what was just the video with no audio. So now it's gonna have the audio on top. And that's really it. Um, so we'll go ahead, I'm gonna sh just go ahead, go here. We will delete these uh, images and stuff that we have from the last time I ran it. Uh, indicators, get rid of that, and get rid of the whole video. So now all we have in this fo uh, folder here, you can see is the, uh, or actually this YouTube short creation is outside of this folder, but we're gonna navigate straight into this images folder once we've run it.
right up here, change directory. So all that's in this images folder is our client secrets JSON and our Gecko driver so we can use Selenium properly. Uh, I can't be fucked with adding it to the path. So that's why Gecko driver is just in this folder. So hop over here, um, Python 3, YouTube short creation.py, run this. It's gonna take it a second. So obviously, as we've done before with the Instagram bot and other projects, it's gonna open this web driver in the background and start taking those screenshots that we want and pulling that data that we that we need. And in a second here, we'll get a bunch of messages from it that are written throughout the code of uh, what's going on. So you can see one of these current mover, top mover just popped up, indicators just popped up, the video, the audio file, and then uh, we're all done. So now we'll just go ahead and hop into our file explorer here, um, images folder, and this one, you can see it was just created now, 304. So pop this the up. Current top moving. So you can see it's kind of blacked out for a second there. That's just uh, Windows Movie Player loading it up. But here we go. The current top moving stock is Snap. Its oscillators are indicating neutral and its moving averages are indicating strong sell. So there we go. I mean, that was fairly simple for what we did. I'm pretty proud of this project. It took me a while to get... Um, some of this nailed down, but once I kind of made sense of it, it was a lot easier. Next episode, this uh, messing around with the Google API and the client secrets really kind of was the hardest part for me. Um, but we'll dig into that next time and kind of get a little bit further in. But for now, you can go ahead and write your own code to generate videos. And then next time we'll add in uh, how to actually upload those to YouTube. So with that all said, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments or anything specific. I can readdress it in the next video when we finish this project up. Um, but yeah, for now, have a good day, everybody, and I will see you in the next one.